Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here. Today we're going to talk about an idea that occurred to us while watching Planet S. At one point in the show, we come across a character that has lived their entire life on the surface of the moon, and as a result she appeared taller and thinner. But more importantly, the stunted growth of her bone and muscle tissue meant that she would be incapable of living a normal life if exposed to the far stronger gravity of the Earth, at least without extensive physiotherapy. We see similar issues tackled in The Expanse with belters. Simulated gravity is something we see all the time on board spacecraft or stations, either through fictional means that exist within the universe, such as gravity plating in Star Trek or drift in the sojourn. In more grounded sci-fi, we often see centrifuge rings, which use centripetal forces to simulate the acceleration due to gravity. But what about simulating gravity on the surface of an astronomical body? Often we either see the same fictional technology used in spacecraft to the same effect, or the problem is simply overlooked. The Expanse tackles this quite interestingly with stations like Eros and Ceres, where the entire asteroid upon which the station has been built is spun up to simulate centripetal forces within the station. Overall, this is quite a plausible solution to the issue, given the asteroid is of a reasonable size. But what if we want to simulate gravity on the surface of a larger body, such as a moon? Bodies with gravity low enough to cause long-term health issues to its occupants, but where spinning the entire object to generate outward acceleration is simply impractical. Our idea was to use centrifuge rings, similar to the ones you would see in space, only placed on the surface. Think the top of the world revolving restaurant in Las Vegas, only shorter and wider. All you would need to do to make such a construct viable is take into account the existing gravity of the body, and using centripetal forces, generate a net acceleration similar to that of the Earth. Let's take our moon as an example. The acceleration due to gravity on the surface of Luna is 1.62 meters per second squared, and we're hoping to simulate an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared, which is acceleration due to gravity on the surface of Earth. With a bit of fancy trigonometry, we can calculate that we would need to generate a centripetal acceleration of 9.68 meters per second squared, which would be acting perpendicular to the Moon's gravity. The problem here is that the net gravity would not be perpendicular to the outside of the rings, but there is a simple solution to this issue. Simply angle the internal decks of the compartment slightly so that they're perpendicular to the net gravity. With yet more trigonometry, we can determine that the floors would need to be angled to approximately 9.5 degrees from the vertical axis in the case of our moon. What's more, you could make this entire system relatively frictionless, for example by housing the centrifuge rings atop maglev rails, similar to those used in maglev trains in Germany and Japan. In those cases, only a fraction of the power consumption is used for the actual levitation, while the rest is being used to overcome drag, which in the case of negligible atmospheres would not be a serious concern. So there you have it. If you're wanting to set up a holiday home on the moon and don't want to have to deal with all that pesky long-term muscle atrophy, consider building a surface centrifuge ring if you don't have any magic gravity plating available. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. Thank you for watching. Please remember to follow the link below to check out our announcement for our upcoming original sci-fi drama, The Sojourn.